everybody, and welcome to this lovely, lovely day today on this beautiful March 25th, 2017, as the UNCG Spartans take on the Western Carolina Catamounts. As we look, as we look back at yesterday when they faced each other at a three-game series that we played this weekend, we noticed that, uh, well, the Catamounts lost yesterday to the Spartans at a score of five and four. As today, the upgrade, the updated, um, s the updated standings now between them is Western Carolina eight and thirteen, zero and one now in the Southern Conference, and UNCG fourteen and eight, one and zero now in the Southern uh, Southern Conference. Going through the lineups today for the Western Carolina Catamounts, we have at bat first in this top of the first inning, second baseman Nobu Suzuki. And batting second, we have number five, the shortstop, Brett Pope. Number three at batting, we have, or at three at batting, um, right, we have the right fielder, Bryson Bowman. And we have at fourth, the left fielder, Matt Smith. Fifth, the first baseman, Caleb Robinson. Sixth, the designated hitter, Andrew Bullock. And seventh, we have the catcher, Spencer Holcomb. And at eighth, we have the center fielder, Matthew Kohler. And ninth at bat, we have the third baseman, Cameron Blackier. And the pitcher today for Western Carolina will be the left-handed pitcher, Tristan Baker. Now for the UNCG Spartans starting lineup, at first we have second baseman, Austin Embler. Second, we have left fielder, Ben Spitznagel. Third, we have center fielder, Andrew Moritz. Fourth, we have the designated hitter, Cesar Trejo. At fifth, we have the third baseman, Caleb Webster. Sixth, we have the shortstop, Trip Shelton. And seventh, the first baseman, Devin Ruiz. Eighth, the catcher, Ryan Clinch. Ninth, the right fielder, Ryan Sigmund. And pitching right now, two balls and one strike, Ryan, excuse me, the left-handed pitcher, Bryce Hensley. There's one right down second base as... Moritz, Andrew Moritz is able to pick that one up. And that will be a base hit for Nobu Suzuki as we look at the replay once again. Nobu seems to hit it right down center, right in between Trip Shelton and Austin Embler. And always those are difficult attempts for the outfielders to make as it's just simply far out of their reach. Next up the bat, we now have the shortstop, Brett Pope. As Pope gets it right to Ruiz, and Ruiz will tag him out. However, Suzuki advances to second base. Batting third for Western Carolina, playing in right field, number 12, Bryson Bowman. And now we have third at bat, Bryson Bowman, the right fielder for Western Carolina. as he is a 5'11 senior, a lot of seniors in Western Carolina from Baton, North Carolina. Always good to be familiarized with your state. As you advance to higher education from high school, as he will take the first ball from Hensley. Hensley gets set to throw again. That looked to be a ball. That will be another ball indeed. Ball number two with one out. As again, Bryson Bowman at bat now. He has 17 RBIs, three home runs for the season so far. He hits it right past Ruiz. All the way to Ryan Sigmund's vicinity as Suzuki will score. And that will be a triple. That will be a triple for Bryson Bowman, the right fielder. Look at him. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, here we go. We have to look at it once again. Maybe not. Okay, yes. 
analyzing that play. That was a play that was a hit right down first base, right inside to where it is in play as it was just far out of the reach of Ryan Sigma. Really good hit for Western Carolina, and it is now one to nothing. Western Carolina at the top of this first inning. As we have Matt Smith, the left fielder now, up to bat as he hits that one out of play. It'll be strike one. Right, just right off the bat, <laughs> uh, literally, Western Carolina is up one to nothing with Bowman awaiting the, anticipating the pitch and wanting to score once again, as Hensley will throw one ball to Matt Smith, the left fielder. Matt Smith now with 22 RBIs. One home run for the season. Hensley goes ahead and throws the second ball. Two balls, one strike, one out for the Spartans. Hensley has already given up one run so far. With a hit by Bowman. And that will be a second strike. Two balls, two strikes now for Bryce Hensley. It's Matt Smith now awaiting the pitch from Hensley. And did it hit him? No, it appears not. It is another ball though, full count now. Matt Smith seems to be okay. It looked a little as if it hit him, but I guess not. As he hits it right to Hensley. Hensley will throw it to Ruiz, and that will be the second out for UNCG. Smith just grounded it right to Bryce Hensley. Really good awareness by Hensley as he's able to first look towards third to ensure as we look at the replay, hit right to Hensley. He looks to make sure that Bowen wasn't going to score and then is able to get the out. Really good heads up play for Bryce Hensley as UNCG now has two outs. As Caleb Robinson, the first baseman for the Catamounts, now comes up to bat. Take the pitch. It'll be right into the glove. Oh, no. Right into the glove of Caleb Webster. However, Caleb Robinson got the best of him as that will be the first error for the Spartans now. As now the score is two nothing. We look at the replay once again. Robinson hits it directly to third base to Caleb Webster and Caleb Webster just not able to grab it as it slips attempting to put it into his glove and gets it to throw it. Bowman was able to score there. As now Bullock hits a pop left right. It looked like two Austin Embler. And that will end the inning as Hensley gives up two runs. Be back in a, in a few moments, the bottom of the first inning now. In the top of the first, there were two runs on three hits. There were These are the student athletes. This is where they train. These are their homes. This is where they become Rhodes Scholars and academic All-Americans. These are the athletes they've always admired. This is where champions are crowned and moments are made. This is the Southern Conference. Welcome back as uh, Western Carolina University is taking on the UNCG Spartans today. And 
on the top of the first inning, we saw Western Carolina score two quick home runs as Suzuki was able to get one in, as well as Bryson Bowman before UNCG was able to get that third out. Now the Spartans, of course, look to match it at least or do even better with Austin Embler up to bat at first. We're here looking at the SOCON standings. We see that UNCG is indeed in third place as they are a good 13-8 and eight overall with the, of course, as I said before, a conference record of 1-0 and oh as they beat Western Carolina yesterday, 5-4. to four. They're on a six-game winning streak, and we of, course want, we, of course, would assume that they want to keep that momentum going. Be interesting to see with this three-game series against Western Carolina if they indeed can as Austin Embler comes up to bat with an average of 418 for the season. 21 RBIs, two home runs. As he awaits the pitch and will take ball one from the left-handed pitcher Tristan Baker for Western Carolina this afternoon. As Baker pitches again, Austin Lemmer will hit it right behind him out of play. That will be the first strike. So one ball, one strike for the sophomore Austin Embler. As he has had a pretty good season this year. One SOCON player of the week a few weeks back. Looks to continue to build on that for the season as he as he's safe. He is out. As he grounds one out right to Brett Pope. The shortstop for the Western Carolina. As now we have Ben Spitznagel, the left fielder for the UNCG Spartans, batting 317 for the year, 13 RBIs. Hasn't had the best season he's he's wanted, or hasn't had the season he's wanted, but still pretty productive for the UNCG Spartans this season, as he will take one strike from Baker. So far, with one out, Western Carolina, or Baker in particular, of course, is looking to make sure no runs are given up so Western Carolina can maintain that lead. Always interesting with these back-to-back -back games, three-game series with these colleges, how they play so differently. Of course, the lineups are different, but they seem to play so differently after each game as of course, we saw it was a close game yesterday, 5-4, to four, but Spartans still ended up pulling it off as they attempted to come back in the ninth score in that last home run. The Spartans were able to retire the last of the hitters and win that game as it is three balls now to one strike with Spitznagel looking to get on base. So we have Andrew Moritz the center fielder on deck. Spitznagel will hit that towards the left side of the field, right into the glove of Smith. Matt Smith, there we go. The left fielder, and that will be the second out just like that. So pretty good start for Tristan Baker this afternoon as nobody is on base right now as both Austin Embler and Ben Spitznagel cannot seem to get on base. It's now Andrew Moritz, as I said before, is now up to bat, taking that first ball by Baker. Going back to the play that Matt Smith, going back to the play that Matt, we, that is a, yeah, that'll be out of play. Saw Matt Smith was trying to focus, make sure that sun wasn't in his face, or it was in his face, but making sure it would, wouldn't deter him as Spitznagel grounds one right to right field, or towards right field, to Bowman, and that will be a double for the Spartans. Or excuse me, not Spitznagel, Moritz, Andrew Moritz. So we look at that play once again. Drew Moritz hits it perfectly towards the right side of the field, is able to get that double 
as we see Bowman struggle, sort of. Really good hit for the Spartans as now they are now on base with two outs. Cesar Trejo now comes in to possibly score or at least get on base. As he will take, it seems seemed like it was a ball, and it was a little outside of the strike zone for Baker. Caesar gets set, awaiting the pitch once again. Baker will throw. Trejo hits it out of play towards third base, the left side of the field, and that will count as a strike. So one ball. One strike, two outs, is again Andrew Moritz just hit that sensational a double towards the right side of the field to where Bowman, Bryson Bowman was not able to reach it as Trejo hits it towards the left center or left field as it's right into the glove of Matt Smith and that will end the inning as UNCG was not able to score. We'll be back at the top of the second inning after this. The road to Omaha begins in Greenville, South Carolina. The Southern Conference Baseball Tournament comes to Floor Field May 23rd through 28th. Enjoy some great college baseball with a trip to the NCAAs on the line in a city the New York Times calls one of the top places to go in 2017. Get your tickets to the tournament and book your rooms in Yeah, That Greenville today. Experience the games. Explore the city. Human beings can be hungry anytime they please. Maybe you messed up and didn't eat enough lunch. Perhaps dinner is very far away. It doesn't matter. Come to Arby's and solve your hunger problems with dollar sliders, cookies, small size fries, drinks, and shakes, each for a dollar from two to five. P.M., not A.M. Arby's, we have the meat. And welcome back to the top of the second inning, Western Carolina against UNCG, as Western Carolina were able, was able to score two runs in the top of the first, as UNCG was not able to score any at all in the bottom of the first. We now get set with the batter up, Spencer Holcomb, the catcher for the Western Carolina Catamounts. And real quick, Stat of the day, if I may say. UNCG actually had nine triples in four games against Lafayette last week. The most triples in a four-game stretch in school history on record. UNCG, which leads the NCAA Double Division One this year with 17 triples, hit nine or fewer in four seasons of the Spartans' 27-year history. So a very, very good accomplishment for the Spartans last week against the Lafayette Leopards. Or <laughs> the Lafayette Leopards, excuse me as Holcomb takes two balls from Bryce Hensley. Bryce Hensley looks to looks to be having a little slow start as he just gives a sh throws a strike to Holcomb. And he gave up those two early uh two early home runs when they only had one out in the top of the first last inning. As Holcomb hits one directly behind him will be strike 2. Out of play. So, as I was just saying before, amazing accomplishment for the Spartans last week, as they were really able to, really able to be productive last week uh, with that feed, as I just mentioned. And they look to, of course, feed off of that momentum and maintain it, as of course they won yesterday, as mentioned before trying to get out of this 2-0 deficit as that isn't good. Bryce Hensley will throw four balls and Holcomb will get on face. Free base for him. As we look at it once again. Actually, it hit him. Excuse me. At also, is equivalent to 
four balls being thrown. And not a good start for Hensley now. A little bit shaky for this first and second inning. As Western Carolina now has Holcomb on first base. And Matthew Kohler now, the center, the center fielder for the Wildcats, just took ball one. 306 average and 16 RBIs and two home runs on the season. Looks to extend the lead for the Wildcats. As Hensley throws again, that will be yet another ball. Two balls now for Bryce Hensley. So with two balls, zero strikes, zero outs. Western Carolina with now three balls. Looks to extend their lead as they have gotten out to a good quick start. Of course, one in revenge from yesterday's loss from the Spartans. They almost came back to at least to even tie it. Scoring that last scoring that last run. As Kohler will take a strike. Three balls, one strike now. But they were not able to score any more runs before UNCG was able to retire the hit the rest of the hitters as Hensley looks towards Ruiz, throws to Ruiz to ensure that to ensure that Holcomb, excuse me, is not stealing or scaring his way to second. And that will be yet another walk. That is now two consecutive walks for Bryce Hensley. As we see Ryan Klitsch going up to Bryce Hensley, having a little word with him. As now Cameron Black here will be the third baseman for the Catamounts will be up to bat. As we see kind of the whole, almost the whole outfield huddling now towards the pitcher's mound, talking to Bryce Hensley. Trying to give him words of advice as we see head coach Link Jarrett come in. Or looks to be like him, yeah. We now see them dispersing from the pitcher's mound. Looking to get Bryce Hensley back in it, so to speak, to not let UNCG allow any more runs. And we will see if that happens with zero outs, two men on base. We have Cameron Black here, third baseman up to bat. As he awaits the pitch, looking to bunt, as that will be ball one. So a little towards the outside and is not able to get it in the strike zone as we saw Black here quickly or clearly, excuse me, attempting to bunt in order to get on base to make it loaded for Nobu Suzuki was on deck. Throws, that will be a bunt indeed. Hensley throws two third basemen. Caleb Webster, and that will be the first out. Very good decision by Bryce Hensley as we take a look at it once again. The bunt, good awareness, throws it right to third base as he is attempting, of course, not to allow any score in third baseman. Third base is, of course, where you want to throw it to in that situation as Suzuki now is up to bat. And he was able to hit, he was able to get on base his first time out. One, one for one so far as he takes the ball from Bryce Hensley. One ball, zero strikes. But again, heads up play from Bryce Hensley. Really, really good for him to, in essence, bounce back from the pitch. And now we'll see if he can improve his pitching as he throws a strike to. 
Suzuki right now. So one ball and now one strike. As we again are in the top of the second, one out. For the Catamounts, Team CG is looking to. And that is a really good heads up play from Ryan Clinch as he throws it across his body to Caleb Webster. Really, really good heads up play for the Spartans, not allowing, not allowing them to get to that third base. So now it's, it is now two outs as we take a look at it once again. Hensley throws and then Clinch throws all the way to third base to Caleb Webster. And that was just a heads-up play for both both players. Really good job for the Spartans. Now they have two outs. One ball, two strikes for Suzuki. Suzuki grounds it right to Webster. Webster will throw it to Ruiz. And that will be another out. As the Spartans are able to close out and not allow any runs. And we'll be back after this, the bottom of the second inning. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. To sell your home on time for the most money, you need a sharp agent with a marketing strategy that creates the most demand. Bottom line, you need a partner willing to put their own money on the line for you. In Greensboro and Winston-Salem, it would be Jason Bramblett. He attracts hundreds of buyers and creates so much demand that Jason can guarantee if your home doesn't sell at a price and deadline you agree to, he will buy it. Partner with the agent I trust. Go online or call and get your home sold. Welcome back to the bottom of the second inning with the Catamounts facing the Western Carolina Catamounts facing the UNCG Spartans today. And they have a two to nothing lead so far as the Spartans get set up to bat. <coughs> and we will have Caleb Webster up to bat, the third baseman for the Spartans, who was able to make two really good plays for the Spartans in the top of the second from Ryan Clinch and then to Devin Ruiz, able to get those last two outs and not allow and not allow any runs. As Tristan Baker gets set to pitch once again. We'll look at Webster's batting average, which is 453 for the season, has 16 RBIs so far this season. Pretty good average for a college player. His He's been he's been pretty productive this season for the Spartans and really helpful for them. He was also productive during their series win last week over the level excuse me, not series win, but last week with over the Lafayette Lepers. As there's now two balls thrown by Baker. That will be the first strike. So two balls and one strike given by Baker with Webster at bat right now. And that looks to be inside, so that will be ball three. So now three balls and one strike. As we look to see who's on deck, Trip Shelton, the shortstop, will be up next. And he was really, really productive for the UNCG Spartans last week as they were able to as Webster hits it, that will be a ground out. He hits it towards the third baseman, Black here. That will be the first out for the Spartans. I said before, Trip Shelton will be up to bat now. This will be his... First appearance at the plate this afternoon with an average of 347 and 13 RBIs 
for the season. As I mentioned, was very productive last week, last Saturday in particular, against the Lafayette Leopards in their 11-8 win. As that is what UNCG needed from the shortstop last week as he takes ball two from Baker awaiting the pitch once again as on deck we will have Devin Ruiz the first baseman who caught the amazing throw from Caleb Webster in order to end the inning the last at the top of the second and not allowing any runs from the Catamounts as Shelton will take a walk now. That is now, that was four balls thrown. So not exactly the best start from Tristan Baker. But they do have one out and only have one person on base so far. Devin Ruiz, of course, looks to change that with an average of 400 for the season and with four RBIs on the season. So right-handed hitter gets set awaiting the pitch and hits it, a pop fly, and that will be out of play. Looks to be out of play behind him. So that will be strike one for the right-handed hitter. As we take a look at some more Southern Conference baseball information, just want to mention notably UNCG's Austin Embler and Ryan Sigmund each hit grand slam in the Spartans' four-game sweep of the Lafayette of Lafayette Leopards last week, giving UNCG a league best three on the season. No other SoCon squad has hit more than one grand slam this year. So again, going back to that offensive productivity that the Spartans had last week, as it is now one ball, two strikes for Ruiz. Really good against the Leopards last week and they want to they want to emulate that against the Catamounts this series. They were able to pull off the 5-4 win yesterday as mentioned before. Would want to of course repeat that report performance maybe a little better maybe have a wider margin as Ruiz hits it towards center field. Cole is backing up and he will not make the catch and that will send both Shelton and Ruiz that will send Shelton home. And that will be the first score for the UNCG Spartans. As we look at the hit once again, we see Ruiz hitting it towards center field. Pass Kohler. Kohler is not able to get it. Really good hit, really good double for Devin Ruiz as Shelton was able to make it home. The score is now 2-1. Western Carolina as UNCG looking to come back. As we now have the catcher, Ryan Clinch, up to bat, and he will take the first strike with one out. However, with that Really good hit from Devin Ruiz, now awaiting on second base. Ryan Clinch's, this will be Ryan Clinch's first plate appearance today. As right off the bat now, he has two strikes. So zero balls, two strikes thrown by the left-handed pitcher for Western Carolina, Tristan Baker. As we take a look at his av Clinch's average for the season, 309 with 14 REIs and two home runs. As he hits that out of play towards the left side of the field, third base, will remain with two strikes. A 
Hits clinch will. Hits it again. That will be out of play towards first base. Remain with two strikes as we see Devin Ruiz just anticipating, anxious, ready to get on that third base, even score if possible. Always good to see the awareness of these runners as they really need that to make sure they know where the ball is going. As Clinch hits that toe with center field right into the glove of Matthew Kohler. And that will be now the second out for the Spartans now. As Ryan Sigmund now in the right fielder for the Spartans will be looking to get on base, if not score, for the Spartans this afternoon. As we take a look at his average, definitely not where he wants it to be, 204. However, he has 10 RBIs and one home run. He's definitely shown some productivity for the Spartans this season with the 10 RBIs and one home run. The awareness on base and looking to hit better. And we'll see if he can this afternoon as he will take the first strike. One ball, one strike now. Bottom of the second with two outs. Scored 2-1. Catamounts over the Spartans. We take a look at Ruiz anticipating the pitch as well, and that will be strike two as he hit it behind the plate, out of play. One ball, two strikes. As we look at this, the determination on Sigmund's face. Looking again on base as he hits it right into the glove of Tristan Baker. As not exactly grounded into him. As that will be the third out now as Baker gives up one run. We will be back after this to the top of the third. what I feel is most important is to find that passion. If you have this dream of doing something bigger for the world, but you don't know how to get there, this is the place where you go to figure it out. And welcome back to the top of the third inning. So again, the Catamounts are Still leading 2-1, however, the UNCG Spartans were able to score one run in the bottom of the second to decrease that margin as it was Devin Ruiz who was able to hit that double right into center field, right past Kohler as uh, it was a really, really good hit. Able to jumpstart the Spartans, but just weren't able to increase their lead to tie it. As we will have for Western Carolina, Brett Pope, the shortstop for them up to bat. As he will take the pitch from Hensley, and Hensley will jog towards Ruiz. That will be the first out. Good start for the Spartans now. As we will now have the right fielder, Bryson Bowman. And he was able to hit a triple their first time out when Western Carolina scored those first two runs. As Hensley will throw the first ball 
against Bowman. And that will be a strike just inside. As those will always confuse the batters. They have to really take a look at it. So one ball, one strike with one out for the Spartans. That will be ball number two now. Look like he tried to do the same thing before with the strike, but it's a little too low out of the strike zone. Now he got it that time. That will be strike number two. So now two balls, two strikes for Bryce Hensley. Hensley throws. And now Bowman will hit it right over the head of both Webster and Shelton as Spitznagel. We take a look at it again. The hit towards left field, right over the heads of Shelton and Webster. Spitznagel is able to pick it up. That's just simply a really, really good hit and a really good spot. And the outfielders or oh, infielders just not able to get that in. Spitznagel was too far in order to get that as well. As Hensley will look now towards Bowman's way. Making sure he doesn't get to where he wants to be. As Hensley gets set to throw. And Smith will hit it out, out of play now towards the left side of the field. It will kind of strike one. So with one strike, with one out, which came up on a grounder right towards Bryce Hensley. Spartans are looking to get another one, and he will hit it right to Trip Shelton, who will hit it. We'll throw it back to Ruiz, not in time though, but good heads of play to Shelton as those plays are always difficult for a shortstop to get. Have to, of course, be aware of where the ball is and have your glove ready because those balls will be coming in fast with a lot of velocity. As now we have, we look at it again, right into the glove up trip Shelton. Really good heads up play. He attempts to throw it back to Ruiz, but just not in time. But two outs for the Spartans now. And that will be a strike. It looked to be a little inside, but he got it right inside the strike zone. As Caleb Robinson is up to bat, the first baseman for the Western Carolina Catamounts. So he will hit it towards... Right field, Ryan Sigmund, and that will be the third out. So 2-1, West Carolina, as we get to the bottom of the third after this. are the student athletes. This is where they train. These are their homes. This is where they become Rhodes Scholars and academic All-Americans. These are the athletes they've always admired. This is where champions are crowned and moments are made. This is the Southern Conference. Welcome back to the bottom of the third inning as the Western Carolina Catamounts are still leading the UNCG Spartans 2-1. However, the Spartans did not allow a run in the top of the third as they were really good plays by Trip Shelton and the first baseman, Devin Ruiz, as well as the right fielder, Ryan Sigmund, getting the last out. So we have Austin Embler up to bat 
for his for his second time as he grounded out in the first inning. He looks to bounce back from that. And we'll take the first strike from Tristan Baker. Speaking of some triples that UNCG has been hitting, mentioned earlier about them hitting nine last weekend against Lafayette. But just to mention, again, Andrew Moritz has 12 career triples as a sophomore, ranking him fourth all-time at UNCG, and that is a really good accomplishment for the sophomore as Embler will take that second ball, two balls, one strike now. It's always good. As, as I've been saying, UNCG has some players that have really been productive for them this season, which gives them the record of 14-8 and eight as Embler will pop one towards center field, and that, that will be fair or in play, and that will be a triple. Really, really sensational hit or really good hit from Austin Embler as he's able to get it past Kohler in that situation as we look at it once again. He hits the ball into center field right past as Kohler just is really, really shocked as to the way that ball went past him. Perhaps the sun maybe got in his eyes. He was anticipating it differently. But Austin Embler is able to hit a triple for the Spartans and really good start for the Spartans now. As he is now on third base, Austin Embler is. It's Spitznagel now, the left fielder for the Spartans, will get set. He is 0 for 1 for the day. But hits it towards left field. Austin Embler will look to run, to score. And he does. And that will be a run for the UNCG Spartans. As Austin Embler is able to score for the Spartans with a one out by Spitznagel. But we take a look at it again. Austin Embler waiting the pitch just to make sure he's able to run, and he does. He slides down and is able to score. Perfect as we see him get up. And that will be, that will tie the score now. So UNCG now caught up and is now tied with the Catamounts. So the score is now 2-2 as Andrew Moritz will come up now to bat. Andrew Moritz is one for one as he had a double last time out. We'll take first strike from Tristan Baker. So really good inning so far for Austin Embler if he's able to hit again, but hits the triple right off the back as Moritz is able to hit one towards right center field. And that will be a catch. That will be an out for the Spartans. That will be out number two. As that is Rice Bowman who makes the grab. That was actually a really good grab as the sun was probably in his eyes, but still able to focus on that ball and ensure an out for the Western Carolina Catamounts. As we now have Cesar Trejo, who was 0 for 1, come in. Up to hit, up to bat, would be the better way of saying it, as he will take the first ball from Tristan Baker. But just like that, it is now a tied score, tied ball game, 2-2, two -two, with the amazing hit from Embler as Trejo will pop one up towards right center field where Bryce Bowman and Kohler were waiting there. As UNCG is able to score off of Austin Embler's amazing batting performance. We'll be back after this. 
The road to Omaha begins in Greenville, South Carolina. The Southern Conference Baseball Tournament comes to Floor Field May 23rd through 28th. Enjoy some great college baseball with a trip to the NCAAs on the line in a city the New York Times calls one of the top places to go in 2017. Get your tickets to the tournament and book your rooms in Yeah, That Greenville today. Experience the games. Explore the city. Human beings can be hungry anytime they please. Maybe you messed up and didn't eat enough lunch. Perhaps dinner is very far away. It doesn't matter. Come to Arby's and solve your hunger problems with dollar sliders, cookies, small size fries, drinks, and shakes, each for a dollar from two to five. P.M. Not A.M. Arby's, we have the meat. And welcome back to the now top of the fourth inning. The UNCG Spartans facing the Western Carolina University Catamounts. As UNCG was able to as UNCG was able to um, come back and score with Austin Embler's amazing triple and then score after a pop up by Ben Spitznagel, but Embler was still able to score, now tying the game at 2-2 two and two. as for Western Carolina you will have designated hitter Andrew Bullock up to hit as he is 0-1 for, for the day he popped one up in the top of the first back when they were able as a team to s score two runs in order to make it 2 nothing, However, UNCG has been able to come back hitting one run in the second and hitting one run in the third. And now the top of the fourth, the score is tied. 2-2. Two -two. As Bullock for the season has an average of 227 with one RBI. As he will take that strike from Hensley. Two balls, one strike now. As mentioned before, Austin Embler had earned SOCOM Player of the Week. Turns out he earned it for the month. As in his five games from March 6th through 12th, the Player of the Week, as I said before, he earns his first SOCOM Player of the Month in his UNCG career. And that will be another strike thrown. And that will be full count for Andrew Bullock. I mean, as 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 mentioned before, Austin Embler has really been showing productivity for the Spartans this season and actually tied up the game now. And that will be a strikeout for the left-handed pitcher, Bryce Hensley. Really good throw. As we take a look at it once again, so throw right down the middle to a really good fastball as... He caught Bullock looking. So we now have Spencer Holcomb, the catcher. He was able to walk in the second. Given from Hensley. An average of 405, 11 RBIs and four home runs. Been pretty productive, pretty productive player for the Catamounts this season. as he will hit that out of play towards the right side of the field. Be two strikes. I'll come awaiting the pitch. And that will just be just over the strike zone, a little too high for Spencer Holcomb. One ball, two strikes. And that will be another ball. Given by Bryce Hensley. Two balls, two strikes now. So Holcomb awaits the pitch once again. And that will be another strikeout. Back to back strikeouts as we see the <laughs> umpire kind of shrugging his shoulders like, I mean, I saw it, you know. It's. I. I we, as we take a look at it once again.
looked like it was just inside the strike zone. Now we have Kohler up to bat, take the first strike. Holcomb seemed to be a little upset looking towards the umpire, but the umpire calls it. That's that's the way it will go. This Kohler will take a ball from Bryce Hensley now. Just like that, it's two outs, two straight, two consecutive strikeouts given by Bryce Hensley. Really good start for him. As Kohler will hit it towards left center field or right center field. Really good hit from Kohler. As Moritz North Sigmund was able to get there in time. That'll be the first hit. As we look at the replay once again, Kohler's able to get it, of course, up and over Austin Embler. And right in between as Moritz, Andrew Moritz, was not able to get there in time. And those are just one of the hits where it's hard as an outfielder to do much. They're right into the right into a good spot as Clinch is not able to catch that. Hits it towards Embler. And Kohler will be safe. So Kohler able to steal that second base due to Ryan Clinch not being able to catch the pitch. As we take a look at it once again. See Hensley and Ryan. I don't know. Maybe it just bounced off of his glove or something. He's just not able to bring that ball into his glove. And another base was given up as Hensley throws a strike. Two black here. Cameron Black here, the third baseman. 0 for 1 for the day. Excuse me, he's not. He's at a s in the top of the second. He was able to hit a base. We'll take that ball from Hensley. One ball, one strike with two outs. And with Matthew Kohler awaiting the pitch on second. We see Hensley looking towards that way. Be another ball, two balls now, and one strike after two consecutive strikeouts thrown from Bryce Hensley. Really good bounce back, really two good bounce back plays from Hensley as he was struggling a little before, especially in the first. But since has not allowed a run, we are now in the fourth inning. This black here will swing, and that will be a miss. Strike two. Look towards Kohler's vicinity. We see him awaiting the pitch, looking to advance to third. Hensley throws, and that will be ball four. And that will be a walk given by Hensley. As now we have Nobu Suzuki, the second baseman for the for Western Carolina come up to bat as he was able to hit a first, or excuse me, in the first inning, he was able to hit a single and in the second, grounded it out. So one for two for the day. So we will take the first strike from Hensley. As we now have two runners, both Matthew Kohler, the center fielder, and Cameron Black here, the third baseman for the Western Carolina Catamounts now. Suzuki awaits the, plit, the pitch. It will be one ball now. Suzuki awaiting again. Hensley throws. Suzuki will hit it out of play towards first base. One ball, two strikes. So looking at SoCon Pitcher of the Month, 
Matt Frisbee from UNCG has been named that, and it was announced by the conference office on March 9th. This is the first Pitcher of the Month award for Frisbee, as a sophomore has twice earned Pitcher of the Week honors and one coming earlier in the season. Really good accomplishment for the sophomore pitcher. As UNCG do has done well in pitching so far, proven uh, again by their 14 and 8 record. That's again one ball, one strike, two outs. And Suzuki will hit it towards Ryan Sigmund's way. Ryan Sigmund not able to get there. And they will score. Catamounts will score once again. Score is now 3-2. As Matthew Kohler, the center fielder, is able to run towards home plate. We look at the hit once again. Suzuki with another good hit. Right past first base. Popping it up, but not into the glove of any of the Spartans players. Matthew Kohler able to slide home. Good hit for Suzuki and good play overall for the Catamounts as they are now leading 3-2. There will be a ball thrown by Hensley. And now Brett Pope the shortstop looking to add to their lead. We have Suzuki on first and Cameron Black here on third. See if Hensley can end the inning here. That will be strike one. So not the play, of course, Hensley was looking for as he allowed that, that hit from Suzuki. And the wild, the Catamount's able to score off of that hit. Now leading 3-2. Hensley throws. That will be strike two. It looked a little bit to be inside, but it was just inside the strike zone. And there's now two strikes given by Hensley. Look if Hensley can get a third consecutive, well, not consecutive, but third strikeout for the inning and not allow the Catamounts to score again. Sensley throws. And that will be hit by Pope. Directly behind him out of play. Still remains one ball, two strikes, as well as two outs. So Brett Pope looks to extend the lead with a runner on third. Waiting the pitch of Hensley. Hensley will throw, and that will hit Pope right in the side. Look to be near his right arm. As we take a look at it once again, Hensley throws, and that will be right towards the right elbow of Brett Pope. That is the second time to this afternoon Hensley has hit a player on Western Carolina's roster. Not good for the pitcher as he was doing really well this inning. Two consecutive strikeouts and now all of a sudden we have bases loaded with the right fielder Bryson Bowman coming up to bat in. He's been productive today. Two of three but a single in the third and in the first a triple with an RBI. Responsible for one of the three runs for the Catamounts today. Tinsley throws and clinch. Wanted to make sure Hensley had that. He's not able to, this is the second time clinch isn't able to, or wasn't able to get the ball into his glove. Bryce Bowman awaiting the pitch. 
hits it directly behind him. That will be strike one. Excuse what I said earlier. Bryce Bowman is perfect two for two. As he hit a triple and an RBI. Responsible for a score in the first and hit a single in the third. So Bryce Bowman as he hits one out of play to his third base. Strike two now. Very productive and probably not the person that Bryce Hensley wants to see or face with bases loaded. Although there is two outs, so he has a chance to ensure that the Catamounts do not score for the rest of this inning. As Bowman will hit it out of play once again. So it remains one ball, two strikes. Bowman for the season has a batting average of 321 with 18 RBIs and three home runs. Looks to score once again or be responsible for a score here. As that ball will be ball two thrown towards the feet of Ryan Clinch now. Ryan Clinch is able to control the ball and ensure nobody else moves. Will. And that will go right past Trip Shelton. And they will score once. As the score is now 4 to 2, Western Carolina over the UNCG Spartans. As that was a hit from Bryson Bowman. We take a look at it again. Hits it right towards Trip Shelton's way. Just Trip Shelton is not able to put his glove towards the ground. And as we saw, just goes right past his glove. And he puts the glove a little on the ground a little late. So not able to control the ball. And as a result, the Catamounts are leading 4-2. And now Matt Smith, the left fielder, comes up to bat. It will be a strike one. As I said before, Bryson Bowman is just not the player that perhaps Bryce Hensley wanted to face, and he proves it again. Now a perfect three for three, responsible for three scores now out of the four runs. Or oh, excuse me. Four out of the five, yes. One ball, one strike given by Hensley. Matt Smith hitting one out of play towards first base. Almost in play, but Devin Ruiz wanted to make sure that will count as a strike. So one ball, two strikes, two outs still. However, a runner on third and a runner on second, thanks to the right fielder, Bryce Bowman. And that is a pitch that was not even close <laughs> to being a strike. And that will be the second ball. Two balls, two strikes. As Suzuki and Pope were able to score on the last hit by Bryson Bo Bowman. Suzuki, pretty productive for the Catamounts this afternoon as well. And that will be a hit towards Ron Sigmund. And the Catamounts will score once again. And they will score twice. It's now 7-2. Western Carolina over UNCG. As we take a look at it once again. The 
good hit right past Devin Ruiz and Austin Embler towards Ryan Sigmund. Ryan Sigmund just ain't able to get it in field in time to prevent at least one run out of the two. As both Bryson Bowman and Matt Smith able to score. So we have now have team huddling up a little bit. Head coach Link Jarrett out once again and Ryan Clinch. And there will be a pitching change as Bryce Hensley is done for the day. So as, as Bryce Hensley is done for the day, walks off the pitcher's mound, we have number 22, Alex Sova, coming in for him. Junior right-handed pitcher. As we now see him warming up. and My, my, my. The score now 7-2 as it was just 2-2 in a tie ball game entering the top of the fourth. Now with, as mentioned earlier, Bryce Bryson Bowman being a perfect 3-for-3 three three now being responsible for four out of the seven four out of the seven runs scored for Western Carolina and he has just been a force to reckon with. As mentioned, three for three and he's definitely be the, been the most productive out of all hitters today for the Catamounts as UNCG now finds themselves in a deficit seven to two. That is definitely not what they had planned. Of course, winning the game yesterday and going back to the series, as noted earlier, it was just amazing to see the difference. Of course, the lineups are slightly different, but just amazing to see the difference of play and, and how perhaps exhausted the players are, you know, hitting, playing a back-to-back-to-back -back -to -back game series against a team, of course, within the SOCON conference, and they were able to beat them yesterday, so the Wildcats are 0-1 in the conference, but now looking to make it 1-1 one one as well, make UNCG 1-1 one one overall for the conference, or within the conference standing, and looking to make UNCG 14-9 overall, as well as themselves get one step closer towards a 500 season overall. As said before, Alex Sova now pitching against Caleb Robinson. As on base, we have Matt Smith due to the walk given by the pitcher beforehand, Bryce Hensley. Silva will throw that yet another ball. So two balls so far. His first two pitches of the day. Coming in on the top of this fourth inning. But still two outs as the beginning of this inning it was two strikeouts for Bryce Hensley. But Bryce Hensley is not able to not able to Withstand, for lack of better, for lack of better terminology at the moment, withstand the hits given by, or made by the Catamounts here. Is Silva will pitch his first strike today. Two balls, two strikes now. Always has to be disappointing as a team, frustrating as a team, to have, especially for the pitcher two consecutive strikeouts as Robinson will hit it towards Spitznagel and Moritz and Moritz will finally end the inning as the Catamount score five runs 
We'll be back after this, the, top, uh, the bottom of the fourth. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. To sell your home on time for the most money, you need a sharp agent with a marketing strategy that creates the most demand. Bottom line, you need a partner willing to put their own money on the line for you. In Greensboro and Winston-Salem, it would be Jason Bramblett. He attracts hundreds of buyers and creates so much demand that Jason can guarantee if your home doesn't sell at a price and deadline you agree to, he will buy it. Partner with the agent I trust. Go online or call and get your home sold. Welcome back to the bottom of the fourth inning now as the Western Carolina Catamounts now lead the USAG Spartans 7-2 to two due to, as mentioned earlier, Bryce, Bryson Bowman's so far impeccable performance. Do a perfect 3-for-3 three three and him getting a run himself and him being responsible for four out of the seven runs for the Catamounts this afternoon. As we will have Caleb Webster, the third baseman for the Spartans, try to get UNCG back into this and and uh, attempt to lessen this deficit that they're in now. So he will hit one right into the glove, or excuse me, not right into the glove, of shortstop Brett Pope. Brett Pope unable to get there. That will be the first error for the Catamounts this afternoon. The shortstop, number two. As that is a base hit for Kayla Webster. As now the shortstop, Trip Shelton, comes into play. Who comes up to bat. His day so far has been... A walk in the second inning. Hasn't necessarily had a, hasn't hit yet to get on base, but he will hit one directly behind him for the first strike. And with one runner on base, Caleb Webster, Shelton looks to get UNCG back into this. As that was the first ball thrown by Tristan Baker. One ball, one strike in the bottom of this fourth inning. That will be a second ball given by Baker. Two balls and one strike. Shelton will ground one towards third, and that will be right past third baseman, as that is a base hit for Trip Shelton. Really good hit as it passes Black here. Cameron Black here. As we take a look at it once again, Trip Shelton hitting it towards third, right past the reach of Cameron Black here. Really good hit and good start so far for the Spartans as there are no outs. As Devin Ruiz now comes up to bat, first baseman for the Spartans as he doubled in the bottom of the second and is responsible for one of the two runs scored for the Spartans as well. And he will be looking to do nothing but expand off of expand off of uh, his momentum that he's had as head coach Link Jarrett looks to talk to Devin Ruiz. As well as the catcher, 
for Western Carolina, Spencer Holcomb. Going towards the pitcher mound now, assuming his position. As Ruiz will, excuse me, Tristan Baker gets set to pitch. Giving a, giving a quick glance behind him. Making sure that Caleb Webster doesn't sneak his way towards third base. Ruiz will take that first strike given by Baker. We have both a runner on first and second, Caleb Webster and Trip Shelton for the Spartans. They anticipate the pitch as well. And on deck, we have Ryan Klitsch, the catcher, as Varese will take that second strike now. No balls, two strikes. Given by Tristan Baker so far. Ruiz again with his 423 batting average on the season. Looks to expand on his good performance so far in this game. That will be the first ball. It was a little too high. Almost almost hit his face. That definitely would not have been good for the Spartans. Ruiz awaits the pitch once again. And that will be a strikeout, a swing and a miss. Be the first out for the Catamounts here. As now we take a look at it once again. Ruiz attempting to, of course, hit it hard, maybe towards right center field as he did last time. But unable to hit the ball there. And comes a strikeout for Baker as there will be one out now. Ryan Clinch now is up to bat. And he will take the first strike given by Baker. Ryan Clinch today is 0 for 1 with a pop-up in the bottom of the second inning. Sure, he will be looking to do the opposite today as he will accept strike two. Or will take strike two. Of course, he doesn't want to accept it. <laughs> really pretty good crowd today. See some of the kids in the lawn waiting for one of those balls to perhaps get right into their vicinity, being able to get one as Clinch will hit one and will be safe. Just like that. The bases are loaded. Right fielder, number 12, Ryan oh, excuse me. There was there was another out, yes. As we take a look at it once again. They get right to shortstop as they are attempted to do a double play, yes. So now Ryan Sigmund comes up to bat. He is 0 for 1 for the day. He will hit one right in between second and shortstop. And the Spartans will score. Really good hit for Ryan Sigmund. Second baseman, number eight, Austin Embler. Really good hit for Ryan Sigmund is Austin Embler, the most productive man. For the Spartans today, coming up the bat as he's one for two. As we take a look at that last play, that last hit from Ryan Sigmund. Really, just just really good hit. I mean, it's just out of the reach from both the shortstop and the second baseman. They can't do much more than, than to attempt to go for the ball together. As Austin Embler will take the first strike given by Baker. We now have Ryan Sigmund on first and UNCG. Able to score one run thanks to his hit. As Baker will throw one way outside of the strike zone. That will be ball one for Austin Embler. So Austin Embler is one for two with again a triple in the third, and he was able to score one run in that inning as well. As he swings here. 
Does not get any of the ball. That will be strike two. So one ball, two strikes, two outs. We'll see if Austin Embler can get UNCG scoring again. Embler will pop one up right into the glove of third baseman. And the Spartans able to score, but only one. Score 7-3, West Carolina. We'll be back to the top of the fifth after this. what I feel is most important is to find that passion. If you have this dream of doing something bigger for the world, but you don't know how to get there, this is the place where you go to figure it out. Welcome back to UNCG versus Western Carolina University. As the Catamounts are leading the Spartans 7-3 to three due to five runs now or five ones um, being scored in the top of the fourth. UNCG, however, was able to score one, closing the deficit a little with now, instead of it being a five-run deficit, it is now a four-run deficit. However, now with new pitcher Alex Sova, who came in in place of Bryce Hensley, who, may I mention, also had two consecutive strikeouts before giving up those five runs in the top of the fourth. Alex Sova looks to not give up any more runs, of course, as we have Bullock now, the Western Carolina's designated hitter, up to bat. As he has been 0 for 2 for today, pop up in the first and a strikeout in the fourth. It actually ended the scoring run for the, excuse me, that did not end the scoring one. It was one of the strikeouts given by Hensley before he was taken out of the game as Bullock will take that strike two now. So two strikes given from Alex Sofa. Alex Sova, excuse me. Silva throws once again, and that will be ball one. So one ball and two strikes. The top of this fifth inning this afternoon. As the Catamounts look to bounce back from yesterday's 5-4 loss handed by the Spartans. And Silva will throw another ball. So now two balls, two strikes. Really good weather this afternoon as Bullock will throw it to or hit it towards Austin Embler's vicinity. And although Austin Embler juggles it, he's still able to get it towards or to Devin Ruiz with the first out. So it is now there's one out. One out for um, for the Catamounts. As they, of course, look to extend their lead. Spencer Holcomb comes in the bat and hits one all the way towards left field. And that that is a solo home run for the Catamounts this afternoon. As we saw Ben Spitznagel just look at it. Look at it the whole way. It was hoping for it to come down before it came out of the went out of the stadium but 
Unfortunately for the Spartans, did not. And now it is an 8-3 ball game. As we take a look at it once again, you hit that sweet spot. We say it all the time in baseball. You hit that sweet spot and you just know it. You feel it. And Spencer Holcomb just felt it. And he saw it, as did Ben Spitznagel all the way. So not a good start for the Spartans. Silver throws strike for Kohler. Matthew Kohler, the center fielder. One for one so far with a single in the top of the fourth as he hits it. Right to trip Shelton who throws it to Ruiz. And that will be out number two. Good heads up play, good throw from Shelton to Ruiz. And that will make it two outs for the Spartans this afternoon against the Catamounts. As we have Cameron Black here now up to bat. 0 for 1 for the day. Take that first strike from Alex Sova. Sova looks to not allow any more runs. Especially not any more solo runs. Those can be a, a pitcher's nightmare. Probably the worst runs a pitcher can give up. He will hand out strike two to Black here. Black here will hit one. Shelt towards Shelton. Shelton will throw across his body and not able to make it in time for the third and final out. Now, Nobu Suzuki, the second baseman, will come up to bat. He's two for three for the day with a single in the first and another single in the fourth. He was responsible for one of the eight, eight runs scored for the Catamounts this afternoon. So he will take that first strike given by Alex Sova, the junior right-hand pitcher, looking to bring UNCG back into it. As Clinch throws a heads-up ball to play to Austin Embler that will end the inning. And at the, we'll be back at the bottom of the fifth after this. As we take a look at it once again, actually, Ryan Clinch throws it all the way to Austin Embler. Austin Embler able to tag him out. And that will end the inning. 8-3, ball game. Back after this. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. To sell your home on time for the most money, you need a sharp agent with a marketing strategy that creates the most demand. Bottom line, you need a partner willing to put their own money on the line for you. In Greensboro and Winston-Salem, it would be Jason Bramblett. He attracts hundreds of buyers and creates so much demand that Jason can guarantee if your home doesn't sell at a price and deadline you agree to, he will buy it. Partner with the agent I trust. Go online or call and get your home sold. Welcome back to the Spartans versus the Western Carolina University Catamounts today as the Catamounts are leading 8-3. And the top of the fifth was a solo home run scored by the catcher Spencer Holcomb. They're now leading 8-3. As for the Spartans, 
we have now Ben Spitznagel. Ben Spitznagel up the bat, and he is 0 for 1 for the day. Looking to put UNCG, make more, less in the margin now. It's one ball, one strike, and given by Baker. Going back and looking at some of the series history against between UNCG and Western Carolina, they've played 62 games after WCU took two of three in Kolohui last season, last season as we look at the play once again. Right over the head of shortstop Brett Pope. So that is a good hit for the UNCG Spartans. Good start for them. Now Spitznagel is able to get UNCG on the uh, on base. Andrew Moritz now the center fielder for the Spartans. One for two for the day. A double in the first. Pop up in the third. Takes that first ball from Tristan Baker. Baker throws. It will be ball two. We have Cesar Trejo on deck now for the Spartans. Cesar Trejo today hasn't been productive with being 0 for 2. Pop up in the first and the third. We'll see if Andrew Moritz with a 382 batting average on the season. Six, excuse me, 15 RBIs on the season as well. As we just saw Spitznagel advance a base. Hmm. Oh, the Spartans now have a runner on second. And now Tristan Baker will get a word with Spencer Holcomb. player who was able to score that solo home run in the bottom of the, or excuse me, the top of the fifth for the Catamounts today as he has the only solo home run on either team this afternoon, which is why they are leading eight to three. As Holcomb now assumes his position Catcher, we will get set to get back into play once again. And with two balls given by Tristan Baker, Moritz will hit this one directly behind him out of play. That would be strike one. Throws, and that will be strike two. So now two balls, two strikes, zero outs. However, UNCG wanting to close this deficit pretty quickly now since they are in the bottom of the fifth. The score of eight to three. Baker throws. Moritz hits it. Back towards right field, and that will bounce. And that will be in play as UNCG will score once. And Andrew Moritz just hit a triple. He is now on third base. As Spitznagel is able to score for the Spartans, it is now 8-4 Western Carolina. 
as Cesar Trejo is up to bat with zero outs. As we take a look at the replay once again, really, really good hit by Andrew Moritz as it looked like it was going to be a home run. Not quite, but it's able to bounce, be out of the reach of the right fielder. That's just, there's just not much, just not much Bryce Bowman can do today who has been really productive on the other side hitting for Western Carolina. As the score now is 8-4 with, again, zero outs. Very important since the UNCG Spartans have more of a chance of scoring with zero outs. As now Cesar Trejo coming up the bat. 0 for 2 today, as mentioned before, but we'll see if that little spark that Andrew Moritz just created for the Spartans can somehow rub off onto Trejo as Baker throws. That will be the first ball. Moritz now waiting on third base looking to score. And due to this wide field, Hitters are always able to hit the ball when hit correctly, of course, onto those spots in which it's very difficult for the outfielders to get to in time to prevent any score or any, any base, any hits. And that is strike one. I looked to be a ball as it looked like it was going towards the ground, but Price said strike, so ball one, strike one. Bottom of the fifth. Trey Ho will hit out of play towards first base. Just want to make a shout out to our whole crew today. Would not be doing this successfully without them. Always good to have everybody with us. Two balls, two strikes. Trejo awaiting the pitch, looking to help UNCG lessen the deficit a little more, just as Andrew Moritz did. And he's out. Yes, he is out. All right, well, that is the first out of this inning. As it, it was kind of a weird play as we take a look at it once again. We see Trejo, did he swing? I guess, yeah, he swung. Yeah, he swung, and that's, that's what the umpire called it as an out. Okay, well, that's one out now. We have the third baseman, Caleb Webster, now. One for two, grounding one out in the second. And in the fourth, hit a single for the Spartans as he takes the first ball from Tristan Baker. Now awaiting the pitch once again is Webster, and that will be a swing and a miss. One ball, one strike, and one out that play with Cesar Trejo earlier. Cesar Trejo was confused with himself, but taking a look at the replay once again before, he surely did swing. And that will be ball two. With Andrew Moritz still on third base awaiting looking to score as we take a look at closer look at him. And that will be a round out for Caleb Webster. However, a score. No. We take a look at this play once again. 
right to the shortstop. Webster will be out. Strip Shelton will take the first ball really inside. Strip Shelton's day to day. One for one. Hit a single in the bottom of the fourth. As he hits it again. Right past second base with another single. First baseman, number 28, Kevin Ruiz. As Ruiz now comes up to bat. For two today, as we look at the replay again from Trip Shelton, as you can see, he hits it right in between. Second base and shortstop. Well, right down center field. Really good hit for Shelton. As Ruiz will take the first ball with two outs. The margin has lessened due to two runs scored in the bottom of this fifth. Eight to five now, Western Carolina. As Ruiz will take yet another ball. And the first time Ruiz hit, and it was a good one. He was able to get a double in the second, along response as long as being responsible, as well. Excuse me, as being responsible uh, for a score. But in the bottom of the fourth, struck out, and with two balls and one strike, things are looking okay for him. With two outs, definitely will look to. Putting UNCG back on the board with Shelton on first right now. Ruiz awaits the pitch from Baker. Baker throws. Ruiz hits it towards third base. That will be out of play. Hit it right to Cameron Black here. That was out of play, unfortunately, for Ruiz. So now the count is two, two balls, two strikes with two outs. Do not want two strikes with two outs. I'm sure Ruiz is definitely thinking that. Looking to at least get on base for the Spartans. As that will be the final and third out as Shelton attempted to steal the second. That will not work. The bottom of the fifth, the score is 8-5 to five now, Western Carolina. UNCG scores two runs. We'll be back to the top of the sixth after this. student athletes this is where they train these are their homes this is where they become Rhodes Scholars and academic All-Americans these are the athletes they've always admired this is where champions are crowned and moments are made this is the Southern Conference Welcome back to the Western Carolina Catamounts versus the UNCG Spartans game, baseball game today, as the Catamounts are not leading 8-3 to three anymore. It's now 8-5 to five for the UNCG being able to score two runs in the bottom of the fifth. That's definitely something the Spartans wanted to do as they lessen the deficit. The margin isn't too big anymore. 
as it was back in the top of the fourth. Quite frankly, we will now have the second baseman once again, Nobu Suzuki, hitting for the Catamounts this afternoon with Alex Silva pitching. And that will be strike one given by Alex Silva. Suzuki's day today is two for three. Single in the first, ground out in the second, and single in the fourth. With him being responsible for one of the eight runs scored for the Catamounts this afternoon. One ball, one strike, Silva pitches. And it's ball number two. Tell at first. Apologize for that, but two balls, one strike. Silva pitches again. Noble hits it towards center field. Right in the club of Andrew Moritz. Good play for Andrew Moritz, staying focused, making sure that ball went right into his glove. So we're here at the top of the sixth inning. One out, score eight five. Western Carolina. Western Carolina looking to extend their lead. Nobu Suzuki just popping one on the center field to Andrew Moritz. Once again, good play for Moritz. Silva pitches to Brett Pope, the shortstop for Western Carolina. And Brett Pope today is one for three with a ground out in first and third and in fourth. And then fourth, he was able to get on base by a walk. As he hits it out of play towards the left side of the field. One ball, two strikes. So Brett Pope is from Statesville, North Carolina. <clears throat> 40, about, actually a little bit over an hour from Greensboro area. As he strikes out. Really good play for Alex Silva. So now it is two outs. As we look at the replay once again, Alex Silva throws. And it was just a swing and a miss. Good fastball thrown by Alex Silva. We now have Bryce Bowman. And Alex Silva throws a pitch that was very close to Bryce Bowman's body. Bryce Bowman, once again, just three for three today with a triple and responsible for a, a lot of the scores today as that hit will be towards Austin Embler. And just like that, the Spartans are able to prevent any runs from happening as the score still remains 8-5 Western Carolina. We'll be back at the bottom of the six after this. what I feel is most important is to find that passion. If you have this dream of doing something bigger for the world, but you don't know how to get there, this is the place where you go to figure it out. Welcome back to the bottom of the sixth inning with the Western Carolina Catamounts facing the UNCG Spartans. The score of eight to five as a really good inning for a pitcher Alex Sova as he did not allow any runs to happen in the top of the six. 
The score still remains eight to five as first baseman now, Devin Ruiz. Now comes up the bat. He is one for two for the day. Getting ready to, or is batting against the left-handed pitcher for the Catamounts, Tristan Baker. As Devin Ruiz comes from a town in New Jersey, Pensacola, New Jersey. Yes, a long way to travel down here for college. As uh, definitely familiar with that part, being from up north as well. Very, very busy up there. Very different from the North Carolina area over here. Although Greensboro is more of the city area. I'm sure Ruiz has adjusted pretty well, considering how it is a metropolitan area up there, up north in the state of New Jersey, almost all around. As he swings and misses, and that will be a quick strikeout for Devin Ruiz. That will be out number one. As we look at the replay once again, Devin Ruiz just unable to hit the ball. Unable to hit the ball as the bat seemed to be a little bit lower than where the ball was at. Looking to maybe get some velocity on it to hit it towards the outfield. Unable to. And then to strike one, or excuse me, out number one. As Ryan Klitsch, the catcher now for the Spartans, will take strike one from Tristan Baker. <clears throat> and Ryan Klitsch's day consists of a pop-up in second and a single in fourth. So... Two strikes so far, and that will be a ball way outside of the strike zone. It looks to seem some of the children today attending the game are having some fun. Always fun out there in the lawn, playing tag or whatever it may be. As Clinch will take a second ball, ball two, with one out. We have the right fielder, Ryan Sigman, on deck. He is one for two today. The ground out in second, single in fourth. As that was a ball, full count now. As he, we hear the Western Carolina bench shouting out for a strikeout. But umpire said, no, it's a ball. So it is now a full count. Clinch will hit one towards right field. And that will be an out. So out number two. Really good heads up play by Bryce Bowman. We've been productive now on both ends of the field as we look at it once again. It looked to be a good hit by Clinch. But Bryce Bowman just making a really good play, basically diving for it. Falling under the ground, but making sure that ball stays into his glove and not bouncing out of it or anything like that. Really heads up play. Out number two now. As Ryan Sigman swings and hits it. That would be strike one. Hits it behind him. Ryan Sigma hits one up top, and the catcher does not get it as we see the children scurry for the ball at the lawn. And we see the little guy come up with it. Really good heads up play for the little guy there. <laughs> Going back to baseball now. Two outs and two strikes now for Ryan Sigmund. Not looking good for UNCG, especially considering how Sova in the top of the sixth inning did not allow a run. As that will be the first ball given by or thrown by Tristan Baker. <clears throat> so 
Sigmund awaiting the pitch. And he will swing, and that will be a strikeout. Just like that is it is it's it's three outs. We'll resume the ball game at the top of the seventh after this. changes I've seen myself since I've been here at UMCG is just I've been really challenged. I've been really encouraged to come out of my comfort zone. As a professor, what I feel is most important is to find that passion. If you have this dream of doing something bigger for the world, but you don't know how to get there, this is the place where you go to figure it out. Welcome back to the UNCG Spartans versus the Western Carolina University Catamounts. It's the Catamounts still leading 8-5. to five. Unfortunately, for the Spartans, they were not able to produce any runs the last inning as Sova now gets ready to pitch once again to them. And up to bat will be the left fielder, Matt Smith. Matt Smith, excuse me. Getting ready to bat for the Western Carolina Catamounts now. And he is one for three today. As he was able to walk. He was given a walk um, back in the fourth inning. So the pitches. And that is a ball, or excuse me, a strike, as the umpire said. So we're pitching again. And that will be a ball. So one ball, one strike. And the catamounts getting closer and closer to the ninth, looking to extend their lead course each inning and to make sure that they do not fall as they did yesterday at hand of the Spartans. That will be the second ball thrown now by Alex Silva. Third ball thrown by Alex Silva. And Smith's average for this season is 302 with 24 RBIs and one home run. The senior from Fredericktown, Ohio. Wow, traveled a long, a long way here from his home his hometown. Sometimes it may be difficult for students to adjust. As Silva throws that second strike full count now. Smith awaiting the pitch from Silva. Hit that out of play. Still full count. Pass third base, left side of the field. So coming into the game, Western Carolina, 8 and 13. As mentioned before, is was UNCG being 14 and 8, being third in the SOCON Conference. As Sova has just thrown his fourth ball. To Matt Smith right now at the plate. So Matt Smith will now get on the base. Caleb 
And now first baseman Caleb Robinson, who is one for three with a single in the first and two pop-ups in the third and the fourth inning. With an average of 318, 16 RBIs, and three home runs on the season. Silva pitches. That will be ball one. see the the outfielders as the hit right past Caleb Webster and that was just a lot of velocity there's a lot of juice on it as we say as Caleb Robinson able to hit that single right past Caleb Webster Two, two men on base. Ryan Clinch goes to the mound as well as head coach Link Jarrett to talk to Alex Silva now. And definitely not the star Alex Silva want, wanted with a pretty good hit from Caleb Robinson as that will now make him two for four for the day. Was a hit that was thrown. Caleb Webster kind of jumped for it, and we saw him and try to get it, but just could not. As Alex Sova is done for the day, and we now have another pitching change for the Spartans. As number 32 sophomore Jake Lewis now comes to pitch. Lewis, another left-handed pitcher. You see him warming up now. And this is just simply a situation that Spartans were attempting to prevent. Now getting down to their second pitching change, that third pitcher now. With the score of eight to five, two runners, one on first, one on second. And the Catamounts have to be feeling real good about themselves so far this afternoon is playing much better than they played yesterday. As uh, instead of just going four, they've doubled that so far this afternoon. And actually, as well as well, have the lead. So I have to be feeling some confidence in them. And I know as college students, you know, Talking about the Spartans now, you know, you, you get tired, you, you got all this work, and you know, be me being a victim of that as well. You know, it can get to you, it can very, very well get to you. you know, even though they play the game yesterday, even though they're at home, you know, you know that various things could be going through their minds right now as, as a player and as a student. You know, it can be difficult sometimes to, to have that right balance. You know, maintaining your, your GPA, your grade point average, making sure you get all your work done. As that may very well be the case sometimes for college players. But if you really love the game, you always try to make it work. As the goal, of course, is to always win, perform at your best and win. So Andrew Bullock, the designated hitter for the Catamounts, now coming up to bat, is 0 for 3 for the day. So we will see what Jake Lewis can do this first pitch today. As Bullock bunts and will... Seemed to be an out. That was an out. However, that was a sacrifice bunt so that Western Carolina could advance in bases. So one out for the Spartans. 
me take a look at it once again. Clear bunt by Bullock. Pretty good, actually. It was in play the whole time. Caleb Webster throws a good ball to Devin Ruiz. Getting the out, however. Bases were advanced, or runners were advanced. We have Spencer Holcomb now, who is the only solo home run hitter this afternoon for both teams. <laughs> it was a really good one, too, if I may say, as he hits one out of play directly behind him. We'll kind of strike one. But one for two so far with that solo home run. And was a victim of being of a swing and a miss with three strikes from Alex Silva earlier today. Or hence Bryce Hensley, excuse me. That will be strike two. So with one out, two strikes. However, with a runner on second and on third, Lewis looking to prevent any runs from being scored is that will be a fir his first strikeout for the afternoon. So Holcomb not able to get off of his mom feed off of his momentum as we, as we look at the play once again. Just a swing and a miss. The bat was a little above the ball as the ball seemed to have slid right into the the glove of Ryan Clinch. As we now have Matthew Kohler, the center fielder, up to bat. One for two for the day. Hit a single out in first and grounded one out in the fifth. As Lewis just throws, just threw his first ball against Kohler. Kohler swings and hits. Right field, right into the glove of Ryan Sigmund. And that will be three outs just like that for the Spartans. Score remains the same, 8-5 Western Carolina. We'll be back after this. These are the student athletes. This is where they train. These are their homes. This is where they become Rhodes Scholars and academic All-Americans. These are the athletes they've always admired. This is where champions are crowned and moments are made. This is the Southern Conference. And welcome back to the bottom of the seventh inning. In UNCG versus Western Carolina University as Western Carolina is still leading 8-5. to five. However, the Spartans were able to prevent any runs in the top of the seventh. Looking over some standings in the SOCON as conference, we have Mercer at number one, 19-4. Samford, 13-8, so be actually a tie between Sanford and UNCG for a second. Then have ETSU, Furman, VMI, Wofford, and Western Carolina second to last, and the Citadel last. As Western Carolina has now been on a four-game losing streak. As Austin Embler takes that first strike. But UNCG Spartans is sure has been mentioned before they were the preseason favorites for winning the Southern Conference at the beginning of the season. Austin Embler swings and misses. That will be strike two. And 
But again, UNCG showing really good productivity this season so far. However, they need to find that find that energy they had yesterday against Western Carolina today in order to win the game and come back before of course <laughs> the game is over. <laughs> but um Austin Embler now one for three. Oh, and just swings and miss again. That will be strike three. And the first out given by Tristan Baker. Tristan Baker been doing has been doing a really good job today. We look at it again. Seemed like it was a little outside of Austin Embler's reach. However, it was still inside the strike zone. That will count as a strike. And the first out of this inning given by Tristan Baker himself. So we have Ben Spitznagel, the left fielder for the Spartans today, as he is one for two in the bottom of the fifth. He hit a single. Hasn't been a part of any of the scoring so far today for UNCG, but of course looks to change that as he just took a second ball from Tristan Baker. Spitznagel says, hold on, let me get out of this batter's box real quick. For literally a good three seconds, it seemed. And he's ready, awaiting the pitch. And we'll take that first strike given by Baker. As mentioned before, this crew, really, 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 really good crew. As, of course, again, wouldn't wouldn't be able to work without them. We'll have really good work ethics. Always help set up, help clean up and everything. Always good to see these guys working together. and Really good to see them work inside the truck, outside the truck with cameras. Really, really good crew, to say the least, in all honesty. Spitznagel is now has two strikes and two balls given from Tristan Baker. With one out, Baker throws. And they, Western Carolina, seem to think that that was a strike count, but it wasn't full count now. It was three balls and two strikes. The catcher, Spencer Holcomb, throws to third baseman. <laughs> thinking that it was a strikeout. But not quite yet, guys. As Spitznagel again says, timeout. Is ready again for Baker's pitch. Baker gets set to throw, throws. Spitznagel hits it towards left field, right into the glove of Matt Smith. It will be the second out for the Spartans now. As Andrew Moritz comes up to bat, he has been pretty productive today. Two for three. First one hit a double. Third pop-up. But fifth was a triple and was responsible for an RBI as he takes the first strike given by Tristan Baker. Be one ball now. One ball, one strike with two outs. As again, Andrew Moritz hit that triple back in the fifth inning. As that is now a second ball. And was just awaiting the score once again. He was responsible for a score there with his triple. But he was awaiting the score again. And it's always interesting to to see these teams, these college teams, when they, they hit doubles or triples. and Like they have that slight momentum, but 
just unfortunately for them, not able to hit it as he hits it right over the head of Baker and is able to score, or not, excuse me, get on the first base. Another good hit. As we look at it once again, see him hit it right over the head. Wow, good, good thing Baker went ahead and ducked. As we hear, Sueltate la mía by Jacob Forever as Cesar Trejo's theme. Trejo, a native of the Greensboro area. She went to Ragsdale High School, literally about five minutes away. Five, maybe ten minutes away from UNCG. So I'm sure he's pretty familiar with the area. His day today has been 0 for 3, unfortunately, for the Spartans. Today, as now a pitching change for the Catamounts. Baker is done for the day. Baker with five runs given up today, nine hits. Played a pretty good game. Now, as it seems, number 18, B.J. Nobles is now coming to pitch. Yes, it is number 18, B.J. Nobles, senior right-handed pitcher now. from Raleigh, North Carolina. So definitely familiar with the state, North Carolina. As we see him warming up now, as mentioned earlier, always good to go to, go to a higher education school, university. It's either within state or in Cesar Trejo's position in the same city. To be very familiarized with it. Cesar Trejo still up to bat with two outs. Looks to get UNCG on the board with a runner on first. The center fielder Andrew Moritz has been, who has been quite productive today. Going three for four for the Spartans this afternoon. As we see Cesar Trejo getting ready to bat once again. sunnier than it was before or well, earlier it was sunny a slight overcast for the majority of the game now the sun is really coming out that will be strike one given by B.J. Nobles So one strike, two outs with Cesar Trejo. The Spartans designated hitter on, on up to bat. Trejo waiting the pitch. Nobles throws. Trejo will pop one up. And... Spencer Holcomb looks, and that ball will go into the stands. Not hitting anybody, thank goodness, though. As we saw some of the crowd very, very surprised and very afraid as well. D 
did not injure anybody. It was very crowd, very fortunate in that spot. So now two strikes. Nobles throws back to first baseman Caleb Robinson to ensure no bases being stolen by Moritz. Trejo hits it towards third. And that will be out of play, just out of play. Still remains two strikes, zero balls, two outs. Trejo awaiting the pitch. And that will be the first ball. Just on a special note, women's basketball team won the other night against the Milwaukee Panthers in the women's basketball invitational. The women women's basketball team has been playing very well as well as the men. Had a really, really good season. Finished tied for first place in the SOCON conference or Southern Conference. Always good to see these the different UNCG teams rooting for each other as Trejo pops one up in the right field. And that will be the end of the inning. Score remains the same, 8-5, Western Carolina. We'll be back after this. The road to Omaha begins in Greenville, South Carolina. The Southern Conference Baseball Tournament comes to Floor Field May 23rd through 28th. Enjoy some great college baseball with a trip to the NCAAs on the line in a city the New York Times calls one of the top places to go in 2017. Get your tickets to the tournament and book your rooms in Yap that Greenville today. Experience the games. Explore the city. Human beings can be hungry anytime they please. Maybe you messed up and didn't eat enough lunch. Perhaps dinner is very far away. It doesn't matter. Come to Arby's and solve your hunger problems with dollar sliders, cookies, small size fries, drinks, and shakes, each for a dollar from two to five. P.M., not A.M. Arby's, we have the meat. Welcome back to Western Carolina versus UNCG Spartans. As Western Carolina is still leading 8-5, to five, the UNCG Spartans, unfortunately for them, were not able to score any runs in the bottom of the seventh. But also, as well, did not allow any runs in the top of the seventh. So as new pitcher Jake Lewis now in for the UNCG Spartans gets ready to attempt to prevent any runs against the Catamounts now comes in and um, very interesting uh, situation here is the Spartans have been nitpicking at the lead however that solo home run before from Spencer Holcomb allowed them to push further as opposed to seven and Seven two five. It is now eight to five. Lewis throws, and that will be hit out of play towards first base. And that was a hit from Cameron Black here, the third baseman for the Catamounts. That will count as a strike. Black here will hit again, out of play. That will count as a second strike. Oh, 
Let me hear some cheers. That would be another ball. Always good to have a enthused crowd, especially when you're at home for the Spartans. We'll hit it out of play once again towards third base. Remain one ball, two strikes. You know, the, the crowd can definitely help. I know in reference to basketball, once again, crowd definitely help the women's basketball team and the men's basketball game, or excuse me, team get to where they went this past season with really, really good seasons played by both men and women. That will be another ball. So two balls, two strikes now. Given by Jake Lewis. Sophomore left-handed pitcher. Lewis will throw. And that will be another ball. So just like that from a one to two count. It is now a full count with three balls. Lewis throws again. That will be hit out of play once again towards first base, right side of the field. Cameron Black here was able to hit a single in the second, and another single in the fifth. And that will be a strikeout. Caught him looking. I mean, another strikeout for Jake Lewis. So pretty good start for Jake Lewis as we look at it again. See Lewis throwing. And Blackhead just looked at it all the way, just didn't even try and swing as he thought that it was a ball. So good start for the Spartans. So we now have Nobu Suzuki coming back to bat again and he had a single in the first so it's a single in the fourth and is responsible for one of the scores it is a one ball one strike against Nobu Suzuki with one out Lewis throws and then is yet another ball thrown two balls one strike now throws and that will be a strike so now two strikes against Nobu Suzuki as Lewis Lewis looking to get another out and get closer to closing out the inning as he does and that will be yet another strikeout for Jake Lewis really good start for Jake Lewis so far And now the shortstop, Brett Pope, as we look at it once again first. It looked to be a little high, but Suzuki still swung on it, and that will be a swing and a miss. And that will be strike one for Brett Pope as Brett Pope actually has been 0 for 3 today so far. Yeah. Ground out in the first. Ground out in the third, strike out in the sixth. So definitely not the day Brett Pope wanted to have in terms of batting, but let's see if he can bounce back today for the Catamounts. That is two balls and one strike with two outs. So. Jake Lewis is thinking, I don't want the same thing to happen as what happened to Bryce Hensley. Sh struck out two consecutive players and then ended up giving up the five runs. Definitely looking to do quite the opposite. Just simply strike out. Now looking 
real good for him, though, is he has three balls thrown with only one strike against Pope. Oh, excuse me. Oh, yes, Pope. That will be a strike thrown right there. So full count. We'll see if Lewis can do it and end the inning. Lewis throws. Purple pop one up out of play. Still remains a full count. Lewis throws once again and Popo Pop Pow just barely getting a piece of it. It's directly behind him out of play. Pope barely surviving here. Looking to get that base hit and not have the inning end or come to an end as he hits it directly behind him once again. We have the right fielder Bryson Bowman on deck, and he's been very productive. The most productive player for the Catamounts this afternoon in terms of hitting. Brett Pope hits it out of play once again towards first base this time. The Spartans, if they're able to retire Brett Pope, Lewis is, should be feeling good about themselves hitting again. And Brett Pope pops one up right into the glove of Austin Embler. And the sun was in his eyes, but he still got it. So, bottom of the eighth, score remains the same 8 5. We'll be back after this. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. To sell your home on time for the most money, you need a sharp agent with a marketing strategy that creates the most demand. Bottom line, you need a partner willing to put their own money on the line for you. In Greensboro and Winston-Salem, it would be Jason Bramblett. He attracts hundreds of buyers and creates so much demand that Jason can guarantee if your home doesn't sell at a price and deadline you agree to, he will buy it. Partner with the agent I trust. Go online or call and get your home sold. His day has been pretty good. One for three. Well, it, <laughs> it's been all right. Hit a single in the bottom of the fourth. So, see if he's able to jumpstart UNCG here as they look to lessen the deficit or tie the game or even better, lead. As that will be strike two, hits it out of play towards first base. So two strikes by Webster. As Nobles throws, Webster will hit a grounder and will not make it in time to first. As 
Brett Pope. Through one to Robinson. And that will be the first out, the bottom of this eighth inning. Now we have the shortstop trip Shelton, who has been actually pretty productive, two for two today with a single, a single in the fourth and the fifth, as he swings at the the pitch from Nobles. Seemed to be a little outside. He seemed hesitant, but couldn't retract in time. Almost throws, and Shelton will hit it right down second base in the center field and will hit yet another single. That will make him now three for three for the afternoon today. As now the first baseman, Devin Ruiz, comes into bat. Number 25, Trey Jacobs in replace for Devin Ruiz now. Freshman infielder. Your attention, please. Tenth inning for the Spartans. Number 25, Trey Jacobs. The left-handed hitter now awaits the pitch from Nobles. Nobles throws. That will be ball one. As the crowd seems to be, I guess you can say, correctly divided. Western Carolina crowd from the UNCG crowd is in the stands. As Jacobs will hit it directly behind him. Strike one, ball one ball, one strike. Always funny to see that all the crowds are against or sit away from each other just to make sure no arguments, I guess, are started. As Jacobs hits one right to shortstop, and that will be he will be, he will be safe. Caleb Webster will not, or excuse me, Trip Shelton will not be safe. That will be the second out now. As now the catcher, Ryan Klitsch, comes in in his day today. Has not been as well. One for three with a single in the fourth. Clinch gets set for the pitch. Clinch hits one right towards left field and right under the glove of Matt Smith. And that will be the end of the inning. The score is still 8-5. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Western Carolina University versus UNCG Spartans as they are still leading 
eight to five. Now, the top of the inning, we actually have a first baseman change. Devin Ruiz uh, is out of the game now. Michael Goss comes in in place for him this afternoon. And for the past two innings now, seventh and eighth, neither team has been able to score. We will see how Jake Lewis does this time around as far as preventing any runs from being scored. He so far has had two or excuse me, three strikeouts and is of course looking to quickly put it into this top of the ninth so that the Spartans can have a chance to at least tie the game in the bottom of this ninth inning and perhaps prolong this game or even better <laughs> score more than four runs in the bottom of the ninth as we have for the catamounts today number 12 Bryson Bowman I believe Yes, sorry about that. <laughs> Bryson Bowman. And going back to what I've said about that, guys, he's been definitely um, the most productive player for the Catamounts this afternoon as he just got the strike. One ball, one strike. That is now two balls. Okay, two balls, one strike. And his day-to-day -day has been a triple right off the back in the, the first inning with an RBI. A single again in the third. A double and another RBI in the fourth as he hits it out of play towards the left side of the field. That is his second strike. So three for four today is Bryson Bowman, the right fielder for the Catamounts. He looks to expand the lead with a 2-2 two -two count. Two balls, two strikes. Now with a full count. Three balls, two strikes. So Lewis looking to quickly end this inning again to provide a spark for the hitters for the UNCG Spartans. Give them a chance to come back, but this does not start out as a good inning for him as he allows a walk. Be a walk for Bryce Bowman, and now we have Matt Smith, the left fielder, who has actually been 0 for 3 today. Excuse me, 0 for 2, with the exception of two free walks. With one runner on base, he looks to make a difference for the Catamounts in this ninth inning. As that will be strike one thrown by Jake Lewis. Jake Lewis checking to make sure no base is stolen by Bowman. Lewis checks once again. As we see them there. UNCG not in a situation they were in yesterday, top of this ninth, as they were leading at the top of the ninth yesterday. But definitely a different story today. And Lewis throws another strike, so without any balls, thrown two strikes. Spartan's definitely not happy with the score right now as that is a ball thrown over the head. And Bryce Bowman will advance to second. 
That boy looked to have slipped out of the hand, just clearly, of Jake Lewis's. Was definitely not in the strike zone, <laughs> to say the least. So one ball now with two strikes. Smith getting a quick breather. MCG has scored as many runs as they did yesterday, but again, not leading. So with that, nothing but frustration as Jake Lewis will strike. Throw a strike out to Matt Smith, and that will be the first out as we look at it once again. Good ball thrown. Look to be... Yeah, good ball thrown. As Matt Smith was not expecting that slider. And Jake Lewis will be receiving a little chat from head coach Link Jarrett as well as Ryan Clinch as well as Michael Goss. So it looks as if, and yes, indeed, Jake Lewis will be done for the day. As now, number 14, Brandon Stevens comes in. The freshman right-handed pressure. And this, of course, was definitely not what the Spartans had envisioned playing today with Brandon Stevens coming in. is now the fourth pitcher to play in this game against the Catamounts. You saw Jake Lewis get three good strikeouts but with only one out. MCG is looking to get a bit of spark from the freshman Stevens today. Or in the top of the ninth. So going back to the to the game yesterday with Western Carolina, in terms of the runs that they hit, we had the shortstop Brett Pope hitting one. First baseman Caleb Robinson had one. As well as Matthew Kohler, the left fielder. And then one of their pinch runners, Pierce Settles, from yesterday hit one as well. The last one, of course, coming in the top of the ninth. So the Catamounts definitely enjoying the situation right now. And they have a runner on second. With Robinson now batting. First baseman for the Catamounts, as mentioned before. So now Stevens just threw his first strike as his first pitch of the day. Stevens throwing again. And that will be swing and a miss. Strike two. The sun really shining now, as I mentioned before. 
hopefully not allowing any of the players infield or outfield to lose their focus. But having the sun in your eyes can really take a toll as first ball was thrown by Stevens now. Stevens throws again. Will be hit towards left center field, right into the glove of Ben Spitznagel. And that will be the second out. That'll be the second out for the Spartans. Is now the designated hitter for the Catamounts. Andrew Bullock comes in, and his day today consists of being 0 for 4. He had a pop-up in the first, strikeout in the fourth, ground out in the fifth, ground out in the seventh as the designated hitter for the Catamounts today. Definitely not the day you want as a hitter, specifically as a designated hitter. With a runner on second for Western Carolina. As Stevens gives that a strike. One ball, one strike, two outs. Bullock will be used will be looking to bounce back for sure. To extend this lead in the top of the ninth. Stevens throws. A little too inside, two walls now. Stevens throws again. Bullock barely got a piece of that. Probably two strikes now as he hits it directly behind him. Two balls, two strikes with two outs. Stevens looking to not allow any runs to be scored at the top of this ninth. Stevens throws. And that will be another ball. Full count now. Three balls, two strikes. Stevens throws, and that will be hit just right down the line. And the right fielder, Ryan Sigmund, not able to get there in time, and West Carolina will score once again. It is now a 9-5 to five ball game. And so with two outs, Stevens allows this last run as – we see the replay once again. It's hit right down the line, like a little bit more towards the right, and it would have been out of play, but it's right down the line. And Ryan Sigmund just does everything he can to chase after that ball, but very difficult for an outfield to, to chase down a ball that's about a good 50 to 100 feet away from you. So. And again, with two outs, it's now the ninth home run, or excuse me, run that Western Carolina has now accumulated. And the score is now 9-5, to five, Western Carolina. So now Spencer Holcomb comes in, the catcher. The catcher for Western Carolina. And his day-to-day, -day, of course, as mentioned before, had the solo home run back in the fifth. Other than that, not too productive. One, one for three. Two strikeouts in the fourth and the seventh inning. As he takes that first ball by Stevens. 
and then takes that strike given by Stevens. Andrew Robinson, number 34, freshman outfielder for the Catamounts, will be the pinch runner for Spencer for Spencer Hol Holcomb right now. As it's two balls, one strike with, again, two outs. Stevens still looking to end the inning. That is another ball. Three balls now against only one strike for Brandon Stevens, freshman pitcher. Stevens throws. And there will be another strike. Full count now. That's another chance to close the inning out here. with Bullock on base, on second base right now. Stevens throws. The hit is, wasn't meant to be a bunt, but it seemed like it was. As Stevens attempted to get it, could not in time. Bullock advances to third as well as Holcomb, it appears, advances to first. As we look at it once again, Holcomb hits it right to Stevens, and Stevens is like, man, what do I do? <laughs> Very difficult in that position. I mean, the ball is in play, doesn't travel as fast, and then you as a pitcher, as... Matthew Kohler pops one up, and that will be out right into the glove of Andrew Moritz. So able to score. The score is now 9-5, to five, Western Carolina. We'll be back to the bottom of the ninth and see if the Spartans can come back after this. The road to Omaha begins in Greenville, South Carolina. The Southern Conference Baseball Tournament comes to Floor Field May 23rd through 28th. Enjoy some great college baseball with a trip to the NCAAs on the line in a city the New York Times calls one of the top places to go in 2017. Get your tickets to the tournament and book your rooms in Yam, that Greenville, today. Experience the games. Explore the city. Human beings can be hungry anytime they please. Maybe you messed up and didn't eat enough lunch. Perhaps dinner is very far away. It doesn't matter. Come to Arby's and solve your hunger problems with dollar sliders, cookies, small size fries, drinks, and shakes, each for a dollar from two to five. P.M., not A.M. Arby's, we have the meat. Welcome back to UNCG Spartans versus Western Carolina as they Western Carolina is leading nine to five right now uh, due to one run scored in the top of the ninth. Spartans now as they are trailing nine to five with one more inning to at least tie the ball game. Look to of course do that. Looking at the bullpen now. They Trying to motivate each other, trying to bring that confidence back, bring that mentality of we're going to win this game that, of course, they had yesterday when they won the game 5-4 against the Catamounts. So up to bat now we have Ryan Sigmund, the right fielder for the Spartans, who today has been... One for three, the ground out in second, a single in fourth, and a strikeout in the sixth. 
So B.J. Noble still in for the Catamounts as he throws. It will be ball one. As Sigmund looking to help UNCG. Gets one in the center field and is a good base hit for the Spartans. It's Matthew Cole in the center fielder, not able to get there in time. So we look at the replay once again. Sigmund hits it. Perfect ball. It actually seemed like it was going to be caught by the center fielder, but it was not a good start for the Spartans now as they try to come back and at least tie the game, the ball game up in the bottom of the ninth inning. So now second baseman Austin Embler comes up and his day has not been quite as productive as he wants. However, he did hit a triple and was responsible for one of the runs scored for the Spartans back in the third. As one ball now, one ball, one strike. Be ball number two from BJ Nobles. So Austin Embler looks to help UNCG climb back into this one and at least tie the ball game. Nobles throws. And that was ball number three as you hear some of the Western Carolina fans yelling strike. That was a strike. So three balls, one strike. Nobles throws. Embler will pop one up. And very frustrated is Austin Embler as he throws his bat into the ground. And as he knows, he knew that he needed to do something more than pop out and get an out. So with one out now, the Spartans are now playing with two more outs to go until the game is over for them. Looking to score at least four runs in order to prolong this game. Ben Spitznagel now. The left fielder comes in and today has not been as productive. Just a single in the fifth, bottom of the fifth inning there. That is a strike there. One ball, one strike. Nobles pitching pretty well. Coming in for Tristan Baker, who did a really good job for the Catamounts this afternoon. And that pitch is definitely a ball. Is it almost hit? Spits an angle on the helmet, actually. Nobles gets set to pitch. Throws. And that will hit Ben Spitznagel. It looked like in the knee. Not quite sure which knee. We can get a look at it again. Maybe, perhaps. And we can. So we see the pitch thrown. Gets hit right into the right knee. Ouch. Yeah, that's... Definitely not something you want to feel. However, the trade-off is you get on base. So helps out your team. Sacrifice for the team, right? <laughs> anyway. So Spitznagel able to get on base with that. And Moritz now, the center fielder, comes in with... One strike now and one out. 
Morris' day has consisted of a double in the first and in that fifth being very productive, a triple and responsible for one of the runs, as well as in the seventh having a single. As that will be ball one. So one ball, one strike, and one out for UNCG now in the bottom of this ninth inning. It's Noble's throws. That will be a strike. Barely got a piece of it, but it was only one strike, so either way it would have been a strike. So one ball, two strikes as Moritz hits it directly behind him. Out of play. Noble's throws will be hit out of play once again directly behind Moritz. So it remains one ball and two strikes. Noble's gets set to throw once again. Throwing. Moritz pops one up, pops one up, right into center field, right into the glove of Matthew Kohler, and that will be two outs, one more out. The Catamounts will end this game. Caesar Trejo once again up to bat. He has not had a, a productive day at all as he has been... 0 for 4 so far this afternoon. He, of course, looks to change that, though, here. Noble's throws. Hits one right, and that will end the game. It was a throw right to the shortstop to second base as the Western Carolina Catamounts defeat the UNCG Spartans by a score of 9 to 5. As now the Western Carolina Catamounts move to 9 and 13, the Spartans will drop to 14 and 9, be 1 and 1 in SoCon, and as, as far as well as the Western Carolina Catamounts, 1 and 1 in the SoCon in Southern Conference. Thank you everyone for listening today on this gorgeous day, and we'll be back another time. This is Isaiah St. Hilaire. Have a great evening.